first things first. What's up guys? So today we're talking about Derek from moreplatesmoredates.com. Now, I really like the name. That's such a cool name. It even rhymes. Uh, but you should also know that it's not really true. Most women or men don't really give a shit how much you lift. If you tell the average woman on the street that you can bench press 250 pounds, they're like, oh my god, that's amazing. That's more than me. He could throw me around, etc. Oh, daddy. But most don't really care about how much you lift. If you tell someone you have a 400 pound deadlift or a 700 pound deadlift, most just don't know the difference. Now he has about 182,000 subscribers, so he's a pretty big channel, uh, at least compared to me. And uh, I really like his style of content. He covers a lot of stuff that I just don't go into at all. Most of his content has to do with the enhanced side of the sport. So I don't cover that at all. I don't know that much about it. Whereas he covers that exclusively. I would say 70 to 80% of his content has to do with either natty or nots or steroids or SARMs or this type of thing. So if you want to go down that route, I would be an extremely terrible resource for that because I don't really talk about it whatsoever or even know that much about it, but he does. So he would be a good person to follow for that. Honestly, for me, it's a little bit difficult to truly assess his content. So out of the hundreds of people that I've written training and diet plans for, or the few that I work with on a long-term basis, I don't think any of them take steroids, none are even on TRT, and I don't even really know that much about how to design a cycle. If someone came to me and was like, yo, Jeff, can you write me up a steroid cycle? Honestly, I wouldn't do it for any amount of money for a few reasons. First, well, maybe for like a million dollars, but for any reasonable amount of money, I wouldn't do it just because it would take so much time to actually research. Plus, like there's risks involved. I don't want to write someone to take a compound and they have some kind of like issue later, a health issue. I know no one's going to have any kind of issues on a normal training plan, but when you induce drugs into the equation, things change a lot. Also, I don't want to have my name attached to someone who's clearly using steroids. If they say, oh yeah, I got my cycle from Jeffrey Verity Schofield, people are instantly going to assume that I also take steroids, even though I do not. So I don't want anything to do with that side of the sport. It's not a judgment, it's just my choice. So if he's talking about like, Diana super bowl droll, and he's saying it's super good or super bad, honestly, I don't really have the knowledge base or the experience at all to understand if he actually knows what he's talking about. But I'm pretty sure he does, just based on what I've seen, um, based on how he talks. I know that's sort of a weird indicator, but generally speaking, I think he is a reliable source for this type of information. His titles are surprisingly clickbait free, which is very refreshing. A lot of people in the enhanced side of the sport really go over the top with the clickbait cycles, like the best steroid, the best you know, compound to use, how to put on 50 pounds of muscle in two weeks, that kind of thing. Uh, but he seems very logical, very reasonable. Uh, I agree with the vast majority of his Natty or Not videos, and he doesn't really seem to be clout chasing or over the top whatsoever. He also goes into the sort of hair loss, male grooming, self-improvement kind of thing, which I don't really go into at all. Clearly, um, look at the size of that thing. Oh, it's peakier than my bicep. Uh, but really, I tend to stick towards training videos, uh, programming videos, that kind of stuff, just because that is what I'm interested in. I don't really care about the sort of men's fashion type of thing. But if you're into that, this could be a good resource. In terms of his content, I usually give a score out of 60 for content, but it's a little bit difficult in this case, just because most of his content, most people won't be interested in. But if you're gonna go down the enhanced road, I think he is definitely a great resource. So if you're going down that road, he's probably a 60. If you're not, he's probably a 40. So I'm just gonna split the difference and give him a 50 out of 60. Now, in terms of his physique, he's clearly not natural. I don't think he's ever claimed to be natural. It would be weird if a steroid guru was natural, right? So it's really not surprising that he uses. Uh, I do think he has a great physique. Look at his fucking shoulders. They're huge. He just has the massive round boulder shoulders, uh, which is certainly indicative of steroid use, but also obviously a shitload of hard work. So I'm gonna give him a 8.5 out of 10 for his physique. 
Now, in terms of marketing, he does self-promote a lot. I saw a video that was 10 minutes, and the last two minutes was him talking about his various projects, his social media, his websites, etc., etc., his supplements, pre-workouts, etc., which I think is a little bit excessive. I don't even like to self-promote, so I think two minutes of self-promotion on a 10-minute video is kind of over the top. On the other hand, he does work his ass off. He puts out a lot of content, he's very prolific, he runs his own website, supplements, all that stuff. So, hats off to him for clearly putting in a lot of work. He did a video on Mike Thurston and his brother. One thing that often goes overlooked though, and is a point that Mike is about to bring up, is the fact that Mike is a fitness influencer, so therefore his entire job revolves around his physique, so therefore you know he should have more time to dedicate to his physique, whereas a normal person won't. So it's only expectedly, you know, expectedly the fitness influencer is going to have way better results than the guy who's not a fitness influencer. Nope, I hear this a lot. People are like, oh, you're a coach. It's your job to work out. No, I'm working a lot, and it is even tough to get to the gym sometimes, so this is definitely not the case. That's not the case at all guys at the end of the day if i worked a nine to five job i would have way more time to lift weights if you're a fitness influencer or somebody who does social media um content for a living you're trying to run a brand like i'm pretty sure mike thurston has his own brand thirstware he does uh um he's a sponsored athlete he has training programs he's uh traveling all the time i wouldn't be surprised if he would potentially have more workload than his brother who works maybe a normal job. I don't know if he's an entrepreneur or not, but I mean, typically the guys who work nine to fives, you have a strict mapped out schedule. It's an a lot, it's actually a lot easier to get yourself to the gym. Like I actually found I had more time to go to the gym and adhere to my bodybuilding routine when I was younger and I was doing a part-time job, two part-time jobs, dating a shit ton and going to school full-time in university. And I would still find the time to go to the gym and I'd like, <laughs> I would, eat, I even did competitions when I was in my earlier twenties. And now I barely go to the gym three to four times a week because I just have, you know, every minute I waste, I feel like is minutes I could be pouring into my businesses or making more content or whatever. And that's the, it's a bit of a trap that you fall into as a, you know, like content creator or somebody who does work online and stuff. But that's what happens. You have less time when you're an entrepreneur, you're working fucking like 80 to hundred hours a week. So as he was building up to this, I knew he was going to say at least 80 hours per week, just seeing how much content he puts out. There's no way he's working less than 80 hours per week. And it's probably going to be closer to hundred most weeks. And lo and behold, he said 80 to hundred hours per week. If you want to get involved in the fitness industry, especially as a coach, as a writer, as social media, as a content creator, and I do all of those, it's going to be a shitload of work. So don't think that it's like a carefree life, 20 hours per week. Oh, occasionally send a message to a client. No, it is a shitload of work. And I have a lot of respect for him for being in this industry and doing things the right way. So he is clearly putting in a lot of time as well. And so I can't exactly give him a low score on marketing because I know he's working his ass off. So I'm gonna give him an eight on marketing. You're not getting more time to stick, have a more uh, flexible schedule. So it's like, you know, to compare a guy potentially who has a relatively like normal life that's regimented to a guy who's like on vacation all the time and stuff, but is running a like a company as well as making content regularly and doing who knows what else, living the bachelor lifestyle, which eats your time up way more than a committed lifestyle or a committed relationship, which it looks like based on Rich's page, I don't know if he actually is, but it looks like he has uh, the same chick in pretty much every single picture. So I assume he's in a committed relationship, whereas Thurston spinning plates like a motherfucker. Who do you think has more time at the end of the day? I would argue it's probably Rich, to be honest. So Mike is about to make an argument for why his physique is so much better than his brother's. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I, I am lucky, in a sense, because this is this is my main job. My entire focus right now is just to look after my physique. I get to train whenever I want. I have obviously a lot more hours into the gym I've studied it so I know what I'm doing not to say that you don't know what you're doing but it's like the more hours you put into something naturally naturally you will be better at it or you should be better at it 
<laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me my hair was, was messed up? I feel betrayed. Uh, anyway, so in terms of his knowledge, I would give him a 9.5 out of 10 in his niche, in his sector. Uh, I think that's really what it's important to think about, his knowledge based on what he's talking about. So I'm gonna give him a 9.5 out of 10. In terms of videos, I'm gonna give him an eight out of 10. It's not super high production value, super polished, but it also doesn't really need to be. It's more informational and he gets the point across just fine. If he's assessing a study or if he's talking about something that requires a graphic, it has a snippet of the study or a graphic on the screen. And honestly, at the end of the day, that is really all that is required for most people. And so again, eight out of 10. Astute observers will notice my shirt just changed and the lighting changed too because I had to stop filming because the neighbor's kid was crying like a bitch and I went to the gym instead. So that is an 84 for Mr. Derek of no plates, no dates, more plates, more dates, dot com. But again, if you're going down the anabolic highway, that would be more like a 94. And if you don't care at all, that might be a 74. It really just depends on your preference. All right, that is all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, notifications, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in that next video. Peace! Mr. Jeff is like Mr. Beast except he gives you gains. Get those motherfucking gains. Gains. Do it. Click on a video. Get some gains. Are you still? to click.